All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at Green's theorem. And uh, we're asked in this example to find the area of the region enclosed by a curve with parameterization r, uh, first component function sine of t, cosine of t, second component function sine of t, uh, t goes from zero to pi. So there's a couple different ways to use Green's theorem. There's a circulation form, there's a flux form, and we're actually going to use it to find area um, uh, sort of the third form. This is really a modification uh, of the circulation form. Um, and so the idea is that using the circulation form, um, we will let the integrating function be one, right? Uh, and so all we need is for PY or QX minus PY to be equal to one. Uh, and so you just have to come up with sort of a placeholder vector field um, with first component P, second component Q, uh, such that QX minus PY equals one. Um, so there's more than one way to do that, um, but one of the easier ways to do it is uh, to just have this be one half and then this be negative one half. So QX is one half, PY is negative one half, um, and then you can sort of integrate backwards to figure out um, that if the partial derivative of P with respect to Y is negative one half, um, then it must be negative Y over two or negative one half Y. And if the partial derivative of Q with respect to X is one half, then it must have been positive one half. So that's actually the vector field we use. Um, and then we use the circulation form and we go from the double integral to the line integral, the vector line integral. Um, and for that vector field, uh, it takes the form here. Um, and you can see the one half negative y and the one half x appearing there in the vector field. Um, so once you've seen that, then most people will usually just jump right to it. And, and the curve C here is the parameterized curve we mentioned before. Um, now, if you're using some of the other uh, forms, do you see you'll need to calculate QX and PY uh, in step two? Um, we don't need the partial derivatives of PX and QY. I mean, we technically already have them. Um, and so for doing these area calculations, this step is not needed. Uh, but usually you're trying to take these difficult line integrals and you're turning them into easier double integrals for area. Um, and then you would need to find PX or PY and QX or QY. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and try to set this integral up and evaluate it. Uh, and you remember that X is given by the first component function of the parameterization and Y is given by the second component function of the parameterization. Uh, and then go ahead and find your differentials. So if X is sine T cosine T, then DX is cosine squared minus sine squared and dy is cosine. And then we just put those four things into the integral there. Uh, and we know it goes from zero to pi. And then there's a one half out front. And then it's negative y, so negative sine t. And then the dx cosine squared minus sine squared, and then plus x sine cosine, and then dy, uh, which is another cosine. And then we're integrating with respect to t. 
So that integral can be simplified. Uh, we can use a trig formula and take that cosine squared minus sine squared and make it two cosine squared minus one. Uh, and then these could be multiplied and give us a cosine squared. And so our simplified integral goes uh, is one half zero to pi of sine t, right? Because there was a negative and then the negative one, that's your sine t. Um, and then when you distribute the sine to the two cosine squared, um, that's negative, negative two, sine cosine squared, and then there's a positive one sine cosine squared, and so you get a negative sine cosine squared, right? Basically negative two plus one is negative one. All right, and then we're down to a calc one integral, maybe a calc two integral. Um, Antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. And then the antiderivative of negative sine cosine squared is positive one third cosine cubed. Uh, evaluating that at the endpoints, uh, cosine of pi is negative one. So you get negative negative one and then negative one cubed. And then when you evaluate at zero, cosine of zero is one. So negative one plus one third. So that's one minus a third, which is two thirds. And then the second group in parentheses is negative one plus a third, which is negative two thirds. Two thirds minus negative two thirds is four thirds uh, times one half is two thirds. So two thirds should be the area of the region enclosed by that curve. Uh, and we managed to do it without doing the double integral. Now for validation, we've got a couple of options. I would definitely recommend uh, taking derivatives uh, of your antiderivatives to check those. So let's do a t derivative there of that. So the derivative of cosine is negative sine and the derivative of one third cosine cubed, we'd get cosine squared. And then the chain rule would give us a negative sine. And you can see that we got those matching up. So we did that antiderivative correctly. Um, you can also, if you're using Green's theorem, right, it is supposed to give you an easier integration. You can try doing the harder integration, and uh, and if it's too hard, you know, using technology there. Um, what I wanted to do to check this one is uh, just do an alternate integration uh, of this uh, area using parameterization. So uh, the area for a parameterized curve, if the parameterization we thought of as two function x of t and y of t, um, then the area uh, between that curve and the x-axis uh, is going to be That, um, which we, we covered when we talked about dealing with parameterized curves. So if you put in sine of t here, and then the derivative of x prime, uh, the derivative x prime, we actually already found that. That's, that's the dx from before. Uh, so 
cosine squared minus sine squared. And of course, this goes from zero to pi. Um, using the same formula there, we get sine t minus 2 cosine squared t sine t. All right, and then the antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. And then here we have minus, or sorry, plus two thirds cosine cubed. And evaluating at pi, we get negative one. So that's one minus two thirds again, which is two thirds. Evaluating it at zero, uh, cosine of zero is positive one. Uh, and we get negative one plus two thirds. We do that right. Oh, sorry, one, one, I messed this up. So this is positive one minus two thirds, that's one third. And then this is negative one plus two thirds, which is negative one third. So we get one third minus negative one third, which is also two thirds. I mean, it's weird how these, this integral is so similar to this one, um, but instead of having a one half out front, it has a two there uh, and they give you the same result. All right, so two thirds matches up with two thirds. We are fully validated here. Um, and we have used Green's theorem to find this area. Um, so have some more examples are definitely needed. Do you see the circulation and flux forms all worked out? So um, definitely refer to the other examples in the document after this, uh, but that's the instructor model. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.